Good morning and welcome to the 2018 Global Ties U.S. National Meeting. My name is Courtney Brooks and I'm the Executive Director at Global Ties Kansas City as well as the Chair of this year's meeting. It is an honor to be here with you all this morning. A huge note of thanks to the entire National Planning Committee as well as a shout out to the fantastic team at Global Ties U.S. for their hard work in making this week happen, particularly Franzi Rook and Vernal Queen. To the Department of State, who worked tirelessly to make these programs a reality, thank you for supporting this conference. This is our one chance each year to gather together as a full network of Department of State program staff, national programming agencies, community MACE member representatives, board members, volunteers, emerging leaders, interpreters, and liaisons. The change through exchange that we create would not be possible without each and every one of these groups. Through your passion and dedication to the IVLP program, we are able to connect visitors from around the globe to local citizens across all 50 states each and every year. These amazing delegates, a few of which are represented here today as program alumni, leave lasting positive impressions on the communities that they visit. Through their time in the US, these leaders influence our nation in a number of ways. They help erode stereotypes and cultural bias, build relationships and new strategic partnerships and connections with our businesses, nonprofits, universities, and local governments, and as they, as they gain a deep understanding of the diversity and hospitality that exists across the US, they often return home as advocates and allies. According to updated Department of State statistics, over 500 IVLP alumni have gone on to serve as heads of state or government. We truly are creating positive change, positive change that will have a lasting impact for generations to come. To all who have been involved in event planning, which I think is pretty much everyone in this room, you know that change, the changes that you go to to arrive at this place where we are today um, at this national conference and I am happy to say that it should be another great year. Um, for the second year in a row, we will be presenting the IVLP Alumni Award for Social Innovation and Change at the Ambassador's Luncheon this afternoon, where we will be um, joined by ambassadors from over 65 different countries. Tomorrow's lunch will include the presentation of the Citizen Diplomat Award. Additionally, throughout the week, we'll we hope you'll take the time to visit the space across the hall where you'll be able to talk to our exhibitors as well as see the new addition to this year's program in the form of poster sessions. Not to mention that throughout the next couple days, you'll be able to choose from 30 concurrent sessions, attend embassy receptions tonight, the Department of State reception tomorrow, and you'll have plenty of time to network. I truly hope that you'll use all of this time to share your experiences and anecdotes with your peers um, and to talk as a group about the ways in which that we are creating change in our country, our cities, and ways that change happens through these programs in our own personal lives. Thank you so much for taking the time to be with us this week. It is now my privilege to welcome Ambassador Galt, Act Acting Assistant Secretary, to the stage to kick off the day. Thank you, Courtney, for getting us off to an energetic start this morning. Good morning, everyone. I'm delighted to join you for the Global Ties U.S. National Meeting. I am still relatively new to the Bureau of Educational and Cultural Affairs, having only arrived last November. But I am not new to the International Visitor Leadership Program and the important efforts of your network. My own journey in public diplomacy began when I was a presidential management intern in the Office of International Visitors in the former U.S. Information Agency, an experience that inspired me to join the Foreign Service and made me a lifelong fan of the International Visitor Leadership Program. A new member of the State Department team and soon-to-be member of the International Visitor Leadership Program Fan Club is Assistant Secretary for Public Affairs, Michelle Gaida, who was just sworn in this week and who I have the privilege of introducing to you this morning. Assistant Secretary Gaida brings a wealth of global strategic communications expertise to the department, 
Having served as Senior Vice President of Global Corporate Communications for Weber Shandwick in New York until just last month. Prior to her role at Weber Shandwick, she was a communication strategist here in Washington, serving for five years as a lead member of former speaker Newt Gingrich's communications team, including in her role as National Deputy Press Secretary during the speaker's 2012 presidential campaign. Assistant Secretary Guida received her master's degree in public political management from George Washington University and earned a BA in political science from UCLA, where she was an NCAA champion and team champion, team captain of the UCLA women's gymnastics team. I want to thank Assistant Secretary Guida for standing in this morning for Under Secretary Goldstein, who has only just now returned from Latin America, where he's been traveling with Secretary Tillerson. In her first week on the job, she's already shown great flexibility and commitment to the department's public diplomacy mission. So without further ado, ado please join me in welcoming Assistant Secretary Guida. Thank you, Ambassador Galt, for that very kind introduction. I am very pleased to be here today. Oh, no. Hopefully I can. There we go. Um, and I'm pleased that my microphone is working. Um, but very pleased to be here today on behalf of Under Secretary Goldstein. Um, and as Ambassador Galt said, he's only just returned from traveling with Secretary Tillerson to five countries in Latin America. It is also my great pleasure to welcome all of you to this national gathering to celebrate and strengthen the partnership between the Department of State's International Visitor Leadership Program and Global Ties Extraordinary Network of Citizen Diplomats across the country. While I am new to the State Department and the International Visitor Leadership Program, looking at all of you in the room today, it is very easy to see why the visitors in this program return to their home countries with such a positive and long-lasting impression of the United States. The fact that almost every state in our great country is represented here today is a testament to the value that Americans from all walks of life place on civic participation and international outreach. More than 500 current and former world leaders are IVLP alumni. Just as important are the thousands of community leaders from a vast array of sectors who have also participated in the program including journalists, judges, educators, entrepreneurs, law enforcement officials, artists, activists, and many others. The International Visitor Leadership Program has a proven track record for altering participants' professional trajectories, while also transforming their views of the United States by enabling them to form relationships with their American counterparts and fellow participants, relationships that often last a lifetime. The fact that IVLP can achieve such results in three weeks or less is simply remarkable. And it's attributable to the program's unique design, blending intense professional development opportunities during the day with informal evening events that allow participants to really experience American hospitality, culture, and pastimes. None of this would be possible without the nearly 100 NGOs and the thousands of volunteers that comprise the Global Ties Network who partner with our programming agencies to provide the people-to-people -people interactions that make IVLP so powerful. By enabling the participants to see the United States with their own eyes and hear with their own ears, the convictions they independently arrive at are genuine and enduring. U.S. ambassadors routinely point to the IVLP as one of the most effective tools that our embassies have for building strong relationships with the people making a difference in their host nation the impact of your work is very clear. Exchanges move people in order to move ideas, to move values, and move policies. Yet even among such praise, we have an opportunity to continue to develop new ideas and take the program to new heights. For example, in what ways can we more effectively evaluate the impact of IVLPs? What are some new approaches for nurturing and sustaining our relationships with IVLP alumni after they return home? Continued U.S. engagement in global affairs is essential to a secure, free, and prosperous world. At a time when discourse can be inflamed 
by disinformation and misinformation, face-to-face -face exchanges provide urgently needed authenticity and building networks of men and women around the world who share our values and a willingness to join with America to tackle the world's greatest challenges are all the more vital. I want to express my deep appreciation for the efforts of Courtney Brooks, the committee chair of this year's national meeting, and all those who worked so hard to organize this very impressive assembly. I also want to thank the seven national IVLP programming agencies, along with the many dedicated escorts and interpreters who are committed to the success of these programs. And finally, I extend my sincerest gratitude to the members of Global Ties for the meticulous planning you put into arranging local schedules, for taking such good care of participants, and for constantly cultivating new contacts to connect our visitors with, and also for showcasing the very best of America's rich and diverse cultural tapestry. In short, thank you for all being outstanding citizen diplomats. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us today. I really appreciate Assistant Secretary Gaida and also Ambassador Galt. And let me just say that my own personal nominee for Superwoman of the Year has to be Courtney Brooks, who gave birth this year not only to the national meeting, the Diplomacy Begins Here Summit in Kansas City. Oh, and yeah, a baby. Thank you. You give us a lot to live up to. We did it. I look back and I'm just astonished at what we did together over this last year and especially this last quarter. We have now completed the recalendering process and have aligned our fiscal year with the calendar years like normal American business. We made it through the surge of the last quarter of 2017 when we welcomed 1,280 international visitors more than double the number of IVs in that same period in 2016. And we did it all with a little bit of budget uncertainty that had us up and down and up and down until finally, you know, we were able to sort of let loose all of these wonderful visitors to your communities to see what you could do for them. I'm very impressed with this year's agenda, Change Through Exchange Agenda. There are many great speakers here in sessions and a lot of them have a strong emphasis on the safety and security of our participants and of our network. I really appreciate what excellent care you take of our visitors when they come to your neighborhoods and going the extra mile in so many cases. A special thank you and shout out to the Atlanta CBM who handled a very difficult situation this year. And I would, make it appreci I would appreciate it if everyone would make a point of attending one of the Office of Civil Rights training sessions on sexual harassment this year because it's really helpful for us all to know the procedures and be actually kind of up to date on what's going on. I'm sorry that we were going to have a Glowed Star alumni here into this spot right now, but he had planned to share about the impact of his project in India. Um, but uh, couldn't make it this year because of a family emergency. So instead, I'd like to just sort of highlight the impact you all have made over the last year throughout our network and beyond. Um, no offense to Michelle and Jennifer, but I've got to tell you, I do have the best job in the State Department because I am just amazed at what goes on here. And over the last... I'd say three months or so. We have a great new intern, Jasmine, who came in, and one of the things that we asked her to do was just take a look at the cable traffic that we get from our posts abroad to see uh, what mentions there might be of the International Visitor Leadership Program. And oh, she looked at maybe the last two or three months and came up with 620 examples. Um, and I know that Secretary Tillerson and Under Secretary Goldstein, who have just been traveling through WHA, this was part and parcel of the stops that he met. Be why? Because these people are emerging leaders and current leaders. So when he goes to Argentina, he can learn more about conservation's efforts there directly from an international visitor who traveled through the United States a few years ago and learned about what we're doing and what they're doing and how we can sort of put it together. 
Then he goes on and goes to, say, Jamaica and runs into a prime minister who is a former IVLP. And this is a pattern that we can point to all over the world. And I tell you, it just fills me with pride to read these things and see how we're helping women in Egypt have a career and a business thanks to our entrepreneur there. How we are looking at improving safety for Americans who go on some sorts of medical tourism visits across the US, I mean across the world, and have a, a higher hygienic standard thanks to an IVLP project that brought people in that sector to the US to learn how to, how to up the game in that area. To breaking up trafficking in persons networks that happen across the whole world thanks to the law enforcement people who came here to the United States, met Americans, traded best practices, met each other, and knew who to call when something came across their desk that just didn't seem right. Our gold stars themselves were welcome additions to the Diplomacy Begins Here summits this year. And again, best job. Why? Because we went to the Post last year and we said, okay, embassies around the world, we think we can bring maybe four to six of your alumni. Does anybody have any suggestions for who we might bring over here who's doing good things in your country? Four or five slots we've got. Okay, so we got 150 nominations. And I have this big binder on my desk. And whenever I get a little, you know, worried about bureaucracy or a little depressed about whatever's going on that can be a little frustrating, I just pick up the binder and I open it to any page and I look at what that person has been doing in their country and I am just awed. But I'm also awed about what's going on in this country. And I have to tell you that the Diplomacy Begins Here summits that were held in Kansas City and in Albuquerque and Santa Fe and in Austin, my hometown, and in Portland, Oregon, we're all outstanding. Thank you so much. It is incredibly important for you to also be talking to your communities about American diplomacy and what it brings to your communities and how your community benefits from having these exchange opportunities and other things that connect you to the globe. Uh, this past year, my leadership team and I traveled to several different CBMs and going to see places, uh, what was going on in Tucson and Salt Lake City and Syracuse and Pensacola and many different other places around the country was just totally inspirational. The clearest impact definitely comes from the participants, but also from your CBMs. And just to give you a little example of one of the many projects that we did last year and how inspirational it was, um, I want to show you a video that was prepared by our public affairs unit, so thank you very much, about Hidden No More, a project that brought almost 50 women in science from different positions around the world to the United States to um, to sort of meet up with their contemporaries and see what we were doing in the US and network along this area. This was all inspired by the film Hidden Figures. And uh, if we could just take a quick look at that video. If you would think right now, top 10 scientists of all time, you would start with Einstein, with Thomas Edison, with a lot of male scientists. But where are the women? Their stories are hidden. and. That's why the US State Department brought us here, 48 women from all around the world, and we get a chance to meet one another and see what amazing things we do, and we get to connect. The program is called Hidden No More. It started off after everyone got so excited around the movie Hidden Figures. So all US embassies did a screening of Hidden Figures. The diplomats loved it so much, they then decided in 48 different countries to identify one woman who was working in that country who was particularly fighting the good fight for gender equality and inclusion, and to ask her to participate in a three-week program where we tour around America, looking at different projects, looking at different schools, coming to different university campuses, to really understand what's going on over here and try and implement the really good parts of that in our home countries, and also build an international network where we can all collaborate with each other. Being a woman in 
STEM and meeting these incredible women, it's actually sharing our challenges and seeing how they are dealing with it in the different countries. But most especially is actually what are we doing together? Because most of the times we think we are alone, but now it's a collective action. Let us do it together. This is what we can take back to our different countries and implement. I think probably the coolest part is to see the passion that each one of the women has specific for science as a whole, so not just their field, but really getting other women and other girls into science. Our education programs are hugely focused on getting kids excited about science, and these are the kind of people that we want to see that are champions for doing that. I love it. The film Hidden Figures demonstrates the power of storytelling and the power of media and entertainment to start conversations that otherwise might not have been had or might have been had at the fringes and not brought into the mainstream. And it just is that sort of catalyst that sometimes you need to make progress. I think it's an absolutely incredible film and it's inspirational for a lot of reasons. But one of the main ones is these women weren't getting anything out of it other than pushing the American dream a bit further and they were doing it for that, they were doing it for the math and the science, not any of the glory. And I think that's such a valuable message for young scientists like me and also young scientists training, becoming, starting their science adventure. My advice would be to stay curious, keep asking questions, keep discovering new things, keep learning. I would say to the children, go out and explore. I so many points and I wanted to give up like it was so hard but the fact that you just know that you can do it and you have that strength in you so don't give up. The things that you get to do with science and engineering with any job you could go into are so valuable and so worth it and you will be designing creating changing the world. This will open doors for the rest of your life so just stick with it and I promise it will be worth it. Well, thank you, Lincoln, and thank you, Florida, thank you, New York, thank you, New Mexico, thank you, um, Texas, and California, and Oregon, and Illinois, and Washington, D.C., for rolling out the red carpet for these women and putting together a very substantive program. I know that you like to hear stories and evidence of your effectiveness and impact, and we are pledging to try to do a better job this year of getting more information back out to you and the network. We'll be working with Global Ties to put this into the newsletter, but we'll also take other suggestions so that you can go back to your communities and also talk about the results of these programs to your communities. Um, you know, while it's harder to quantify, there's also been a sense that the IVLP confers a substantial long-term return for U.S. taxpayers in their own communities. Um, not just the economic benefits of hosting these visitors and having them in your hotels and the restaurants and the rest of it, but the other benefits. And I really have to salute Global Ties U.S. for working with the University of Southern California to put together a, a survey and a study to look at these effects in local communities. Um, it's been fascinating to learn that not only does the program assist in building cross-cultural communication skills vital to be successful in the global marketplace, it has several other results. Among these, people said, these were the highest scoring sort of statements. I have learned new skills that will allow me to do my job better. I have gained knowledge that helps me professionally. I have greater pride in my local community. Through my involvement and participation, I have met people in my own community that I would not previously have met. And finally, most respondents to the pilot study concluded that participation in our exchanges has served to enhance the image of this community as a good place to live. Well, I really appreciate how often you are all successful in getting your own civic, state, and community leaders to meet with our visitors. Local leaders like Boston Police Commissioner William Evans and two wonderful leaders and resources who are here with us today, Austin Nunez from Arizona and um, Suzanne Clapp 
well, Austin is from right outside of Tucson, and Suzanne Clapp is the Arizona City Councilwoman from Scottsdale. I'd like to applaud you all and ask you to join me on behalf of all the people who make time in their busy professional schedules to visit with our visitors. Please stand. Thank you so much. Well, and I have to think that surely these results will only help to serve you to strengthen your case as to how this builds civic pride and competencies required to be successful in this competitive world. And speaking of competition, one of my chief duties is to make the case for our work inside of the federal government. So I'd like to conclude my remarks by asking your assistance in this cause. You'll see scattered around on the tables and at different places throughout the conference some blank note cards. Please do take the time sometime during these three days to share your anecdotes, your thoughts, your examples, and maybe even a quote about the impact of international exchanges in your communities. We would like to quote you, and if you agree, please put your name on the cord or your organization, and if not, just write something that we can kind of look at and, and think about. Thank you so much for a terrific 15-month year and all the best to all of you for making 2018 equally wonderful. Thank you. Thank you, Stacy. You're so energizing. And we love the anecdotes. Um, I am so honored to stand before you as the chair of the Global Ties U.S. Board of Directors. Um, you know, quite honestly, governance can be a very challenging responsibility. And the good news is I don't have to do it alone. So right now I'd like to take the time to acknowledge um, the team that leads this organization. First, I'd like to thank the board of directors. I'd like to ask them to just stand. I want you to see who they are, not because I want you to see who they are, but I want you to see who they are so that you can tackle them during the next couple of days. We are here to be responsive to you. Thank you. When I think about one year ago, there was uncertainty. We were concerned about, at the CBM level, especially budgets. We're still concerned about that. But there was a word that was used during the um, national meeting last year. How many of you remember resilience? And we proved to be a resilient network. I have to really appreciate, applaud a team of people who you will feel the impact, and I think you already have, of this year's national meeting. You've already heard from our very able planning committee chair, and she and I have chatted, and each time I applaud her, she says, Jackie, we could not have done it without the Global Ties U.S. team. Many of you know that this has also been a year of great transition. We've had leadership transition. But the good news is that leadership is not exclusive to one title, that it is a shared responsibility of influence. And so I'm going to do something that's a little different. They're not expecting it, but I'm going to ask the Global Ties US team to stand and come up front. We could not be celebrating or experiencing this national meeting. I want all of you to come up front. Not only have they been organizing this national meeting, there are programs, there are grant details that have to be implemented, compliance issues, 
communications. I can't tell you, some of them are in the back, I believe, correct? When we look at the audio visual, we have a team of 17. A good number of them are new, but every one of them is accountable. Every one of them has taken responsibility, not only for this national meeting, but for every program. The summits, the re, uh, relations with our uh, CBMs, I can't appreciate you enough. And I want the network to just stand and thank you one more time. And I've had numerous conversations with Stacy and the Office of International Visitor Team. And I know that this team at Global Ties US has also appreciated and implemented a very close relationship with our partners at the uh, Department of State. Um, and Stacy, I want to thank you and your team for being so supportive. We can't do these um, uh, things in a vacuum and it's been incredibly wonderful to watch them. We also have, as many of you know, we uh, gave birth last year to a foundation. And that foundation has evolved and is playing a very specific role that we applaud, that we needed, and I'd like to ask the members of the foundation board who are with us, but of course, Kyle Moyer as its leader. But uh, Global Ties Foundation board members, please stand. <laughs> and there's one other entity that some of you might not be uh, as knowledgeable about, but we also have an advisory council. And our advisory council provides tremendous advice, support, and uh, expertise to our agenda, uh, to the strategic goals of the organization. I'd like to ask if the advisory council members will also stand. I've been told that I have to do this in a very timely fashion, so I can't go on and on. But I just want to share with you the impact that I've already experienced arriving here in Washington, D.C. for this national meeting. Um, it's a reunion, you know. Um, and I've been actually told it's like a family reunion. So as I deplaned, I saw one of my colleagues, Annette Alvarez, and it was my sister uh, from Miami. And then yesterday, she introduced me to one of our emerging leaders. And she and I had time to spend together. She is um, trying to, uh, she just, she's been with the Miami uh, CBM for four years. Um, she graduated in December and she is waiting for her acceptance to the JET program, which is a teaching program in Japan. But that's not, ah, so that impressed me. But it wasn't until at the strategic dialogue yesterday and I had a chance to meet with the Minister of Communications for Japan. And she happened to be with me and um, didn't expect that I would probably introduce her to him. And she started speaking in Japanese. I don't know a word of Japanese, but I knew she was fluent. And he was amazed. I wasn't because she's one of our emerging leaders. So I would like our emerging leaders, of course, I'd like her to stand, please. And I'd like our emerging leaders, I think we have 21 of them this year.
I, I saw another one that was greeted by Anna from Dallas, and she had just arrived from Spain. So ladies and gentlemen, these young people are our leaders today and into the future, and they are having impact not only in their CBM location, throughout our network, but around the world. This is your Global Ties US. This is what we do, and this is the impact that you have, not only here that we celebrated our national meeting, but as you return to your local communities. And we're so appreciative. This is a, a couple of days of uh, continued learning and networking. Please make the best use of it as you can. And we have a little gift for you. We already have our 2018 directory. Yes, it's a paper directory. And you can actually pick it up in the networking um, uh, center later on today. So ladies and gentlemen, um, I think we're right on time. And uh, please enjoy, learn, and network as much as you can. There's a lot of work for us to do throughout the nation, our world, and in our communities, and have a successful meeting.